Good morning and welcome to um, KB's T's daily vlog um, and today we're going to be talking about the Amac Ama Amalekite soldier, easy for some to say, uh, not for me today it seems. Um, and who was the Amalekite soldier? Um, he was an unnamed foot soldier um, who was from the Amalekite army. So we might ask, who are the Amalekites? Well, they were a nomadic tribe, uh, descendants of Amalek, Esau's grandson skilled in guerrilla warfare and very brutal. They were a constant torment of Israel. So when was this taking place? So it was around 1000 BC. So why are we talking about um, this character? So he's a bit of a B-list character in the Bible, um, but when we look at the story of King Saul and David, um, we see that it's a more important role. Um, so what does he do to be a character we're looking at? Um, so today we're looking at the Amalekite soldier because um, we see that he was hustling for position or taking advantage and uh, it turns out to be a very foolish act for him, uh, unfortunately. So we find it um, in 2 Samuel 1. So the story opens with um, two kings doing battle with um, two different enemies of Israel. Um, on the one hand, you've got King Saul. On the other hand, King David, who'd been secretly anointed as Saul's successor by Samuel, but it wasn't public knowledge yet. One battle in the north of the country on Mount Gilboa, and the other takes place in the far south at a place called Zekelag. In the first battle, Saul and the Israelite army suffer a massive defeat at the hands of the Philistines, resulting in the death of Saul and his sons. It's a wipeout, and Saul doesn't die well. Uh, mortally wounded, he, fall, uh, he fails to get a man to finish him off, and he throws himself on his own sword. In the battle, in the second battle, uh, David launches a highly successful raid on the Amalekites in Ziklag, uh, David's city. It had been given to him by Achish, the king of Gath, but raiders were destroying it and taking it away, uh, the wives and children of David's soldiers. Now remember, David, um, uh, David we're talking about was a warrior, was a, a warrior king, and um, he was in the habit of leaving no one alive after a battle, including women and children. See 1 Samuel 27, 9. There was no way he was going to let his city be destroyed, be destroyed by the Amalekites. So 2 Samuel begins with a two-day rest and a lull in the fighting for David and his men. This is when um, we meet the man of the moment, or the man we're talking about today anyway. Um, stumbling into the camp, Covered in dust and grime, clothing torn, the Amalekite soldier brings word of Saul's demise. And then to get interrogation begins, David's master interrogator, he probes for detail. The thing is, we know the true version of the events. Saul takes his own life. So what on earth is this guy doing? This is what the author's saying. He was lobbying for position. There's some giveaways. He happens to be on Mount Gilboa. Oh really? You mean to say that you're the sole survivor of mass slaughter? You just happened to be in the midst of the chariots and horses fighting and lived. He appears to have lifted Saul's stuff, stolen it, his crown and his band from his arm, see verse 10, after uh, putting a final blow on the king's body. David's suspicious arounds. Maybe he's a scavenger come to looting and from battlefields. He doesn't answer the questions when he's probed um, about Jonathan is also dead, missing out details that show sure sign of making stuff up, especially in response to a direct question. So another thing that um, Saul's, um, David's very suspicious about that he calls David Lord, yet he's an Amalekite. So it looks like he's trying to win David's favor. So he's bringing Saul's crown and band um, to David's feet as a kingmaker. Um, so he's trying to lay up a position for himself for, for David to look for favour in his eyes. So this man had his own future in mind. He looks for promotion and advantage, but unfortunately what he got was death. David's full of anger, anger and grief that the soldier should lift his hand against the Lord's anointed and he has him struck down and killed. So we learn from um, some important lessons from the Amalekite soldier, um, the wider issues of honour and the, of the Lord's anointing. So 
our author says, you reap what you sow. It's a strong biblical principle. Um, so check out Galatians 6 verse 7 and Proverbs 11 verses 18 and Proverbs 22 verse 8. Deal in lies and in truth and that will be your undoing. Maybe not as swiftly as the guy in the story, but you will come uh, out in the end and deal with the consequences. Not good. Amalekite um, thought to take advantage of the opportunity for personal gain, only to have his plan backfire on him. As we read through the Psalms, a couple of verses stand out in potential uh, remembrance of David and his episode in his life. Let the lying lips be put to silence when speak insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous in Psalm 31 verse 18. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of a foreigner whose mouths speak lying words and whose right hand are, um, are falsehood uh, in Psalm 144 verse 11. Lastly, perhaps David's son Solomon, who might have been told this event by his father, had um, accounts of his Amalekite in mind when he wrote what is extremely appropriate proverb in this situation. A fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul in Proverbs 18 verse 7. David killed the Amalekite not because of his lies nor because of souls that he took Saul's belongings. He struck him down because he touched the Lord's anointed. Once the king was anointed by God only God had the right to touch or remove him. Even though Saul's gone rotten by this time still the anointing of the God was on him so don't push this last point too far but consider this people tend to develop cultures of complaining most groups of people end up moaning about something or someone when they get together typically we moan about those in authority be it bosses at work pastors at church I think these verses give us a clear indication that those who God has set in authority over us are his to deal with Let's make sure we honour those God appointed to lead us. So questions. Are we guilty of lobbying for position which might be compromising our behaviour as a believer? Do you complain or and criticise the Lord's anointed? Maybe the Prime Minister. That's been a, a topic recently that has been on everyone's lips, I'm sure. Um, or a boss at work or a leader in the church. So maybe we should consider how... Um, the Lord's using these people. Um, determined to be truthful. So our actions is our author saying, determined to be truthful on all occasions, even if it's going to be painful. Honour and respect those in authority. Find something positive to say about your boss or your pastor or your colleagues, your church friend, even the prime minister. And let's repent of those actions that um, we might be maybe bad mouthing um, the Lord's anointed and maybe take some lessons from uh, today's readings. That's it. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Bye.